Hey, what's going on YouTube? Here's a problem that I have for today. There is a mass M sitting on this inclined plane at some angle theta. And uh, for this question, we have friction. We have static friction. So I thought it's not gonna be a bad idea if I go over what the static friction is and like how it works. And then I'm gonna hop back on uh, this problem that we have to, to solve. So, static friction. Let's say we have an object M on this floor and um, I'm exerting some force to it. I'm applying a force to it. And let's just assume that when I'm applying this force to this object, this object is not moving. Um, so the question is, when I'm applying this force to this, to this object and it is not moving to the right, that means there is gonna be another force that cancels my force um, but the question is how is showing that force can be and the answer to that question is that force is not a fixed uh, force it varies between zero to whatever it takes to keep it keep the object uh, from moving. So that force is called uh, static friction force. Static friction force has a range between zero and it has some maximum uh, value. And in order to find uh, the value of friction force, let's call it Fs that has to be equal to, I mean, that's uh, by definition is um, mu times the normal force. Um, one interesting fact about this equation is it just looks like the friction force is dependent, is a function of only the normal force. So let's say I have an object M. Oops. And I'm exerting a force to it. And let's say I have another object M1, M2. Uh, one interesting fact here is that the friction force is not a function of the area of contact. So this object, we like initially maybe like we, we, we look at these, we look at these two objects and we're like, oh my God, uh, this object, the second one has more surface area with the floor. So there is gonna be more friction or this object has less surface area compared to the other one with the floor. So there is gonna be less static friction that's not the case because uh, friction force the friction force is not a function of surface area or here um, so I thought I should explain just a little bit about what it is and how it works and uh, I think now we can hop back on the question we had and so uh, this question is about, we have, uh, there's a mass M sitting on this inclined plane at some angle theta. And let's just assume that this object is not sli sliding down the inclined plane yet. So let's crank up this theta uh, and see where it will start sliding down. Well, 
we know that at some point it's going to happen, right? So if I crank up theta to a maximum angle, then the object cannot stay uh, on this uh, plane anymore, right? It, it's going to like slide down. So right exactly at the time where at the time when um, this object begins to slide, we would like to find two things: the coefficient of a static friction and the value of friction force. Uh, as always, it's the it's like uh, as always the best step to start off with uh, these kind of questions is uh, drawing a free body diagram to see a relationship between all the forces acting in uh, uh, on this object. So let's say this is our x uh, axis and this is the y axis and let me use another color. Uh, now let's assume here is our theta which we had here and here is our object right there. Um, so as always we know that we have the force of gravity pulling down on this object which is equal to mg and then let's find the components of the force of gravity the y component of it would be so if I do that this angle equals to theta which is the same angle as this one so the value of y component would be mg cosine of theta and the x component is mg sine of theta. And then um, if you remember I said we have, we're assuming that in this inclined plane we have friction so let me use another color for friction. I'm going to use orange. Now let's say this is the uh, this is the friction force. Um, there is one more force that I forgot to draw. Uh, that force is the normal force, and it is. right here. N stands for normal and normal is a mathematical term for perpendicular. So always normal force is perpendicular to the surface that our object is uh, located on. Um, so let's use another color again. Okay, so what do we have on the x-axis? We have negative, we have this guy, negative mg sine of theta, and then we have the force of friction, f of s, and that has to be equal to m, which is the mass of our object, times a, which is the acceleration of this object uh, in the x-direction, all right, negative. And then in the y-direction, we have this component, which is negative mg cosine of theta plus the normal force, and that's equal to m and the acceleration of our object in the y direction. Um, so you're solving this question based on one fact and that fact is you're looking for these two values 
as this object s starts to slide down. So at the very beginning, there is no acceleration in the x direction or in the y direction. Or we can say the acceleration is equal to zero. With that assumption, we can say these two equations are equal to zero because we're just talking about exactly the time that this object starts to slide down this uh, inclined plane. Um, so let's say this is um, one, this is two. From one, we can say that fs equals mg sine of theta. And um, from the second one, we can say um, mg, I mean, sorry, the normal force equals mg cosine of theta. By definition, we know that, and, and as I explained at the very beginning of this uh, video, I said the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. So if I substitute the value of f of s into the first equation, we have mu times n equals mg sine of theta. And um, since we are looking for the co coefficient of static friction, which is uh, mu, we can easily say uh, mu equals to m g sine of theta divided by n. The second equation tells us the value of n. Let's just substitute number two into this equation, we would have mg sine of uh, theta divided by mg cosine of theta. So mg, these two cancel out, and we would have the value of mu would be uh, tangent of theta. So we just found the value of coefficient of static friction, which is what we wanted. Um, so now we need to find the um, friction force right at a time when this object starts to slice down. Um, so uh, that's equal to this guy, which is f of s. And we know that f of s right here, we have it already. Actually, we found it. F of s is mg sine of theta. And let's just assume uh, theta is 45 degrees. And uh, let's say that mass is six kilograms. In that case, the mass is six kilograms times g, which is 9.8 meter per second squared, and uh, times sine of 45 degrees is equal to 6 times 9.8 times sine of 45 degrees is uh, square root of 2 over 2 f of x approximately would be equal to um, 42 newtons. That was it. Thank you for watching.